Hello, my name is Dan and I'm an engineer at Epsilon3. Today I will be demoing our latest capability we call automation. With automation, you can now run procedures without user intervention, making rapid decisions based on real-time telemetry values. Automation can be used to automate steps in many different use cases, including assembly, integration, and testing. Here I've created a procedure to simulate a routine LeoSat health check. Before we dive into this procedure though, let me demonstrate how to enable automation for new and existing procedures. For new procedures, click on the new procedure button, a new modal will pop up, and below you can see a toggle called automation enabled. For existing procedures, create a new draft, enter the procedure settings, and this toggle lives here as well. Now let's dive into this procedure and let me highlight some steps. So in A1, I have two telemetry values with an operator checking its range. If these comparisons pass, then automation will continue. If these comparisons fail, then automation will pause and notify the operator that these have not passed. The same thing can be done for commanding blocks where we send a command and its response is successful, then we continue. If it fails, then we will pause and notify the operator. In section B, we have a chain of conditionals based on telemetry comparisons. So if this telemetry value passes this comparison, we will move on to the next step. If it fails, we will move on to D1, where we will do fault detection and try to determine what happened. Similarly, for B2 and B3, we're moving on to the next step being B3 for B2 and C1 for B3 fail, we will move on to D1. Moving on to section C, we have another commanding block and we also have a field input. Any field inputs in a step will cause automation to pause on that step because operator's input is required. In section D, we have in D2 a specific sign off that is required from the engineering group. If any signoffs are required from a group or a user, automation will stop and wait for that step to be signed off by that group or user before continuing. In section E, we have another field input um, that needs to be validated before continuing. So now let's get into this procedure and see it in action. At the top, you'll see a bolt icon. This is our automation button and Upon clicking it, automation will start. At the top, you can see automation is paused due to step C2, and it needs our manual input. But before we get there, let's see what automation has done. So here for A1, these telemetry sensors passed, so this step will sign off by automation indicated below, and on the right, you can see a bolt icon. Similarly for commanding, we got a successful response, so we continued. And for our anomaly detection with our conditional chain, B1 passed, so we moved on to B2. B2 passed, we moved on B3. B3 passed, so we moved on to C1, which sent another command and got a successful response. For C2, this requires a field input. So here, I will sign off on this step. And sign off. Upon signing off, now our toolbar resume button is active. Clicking that, it says that we need a sign off on E1. That is the other field input. The reason D, section D did not run is because none of our comparisons in our anomaly detection failed, therefore not triggering us to go to D. For section E, here we can demonstrate that we can see real-time telemetry values over time in this chart since the procedure started. And I can validate these values now and sign off and resume automation. With automation resuming, we have completed this procedure and at the top you can see that automation has been completed. Thank you.